Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning and good evening. Wherever you are, it's a great pleasure to be here. And it's been a couple of months since uh, Transvision hosted a webinar today. I'm very excited because I am here to with three incredible, amazing uh, guests. Um, and in addition, we are here to make a, uh, a presentation of the overview of season 2023. Uh, of course, we are extremely excited because finally, uh, the Chance Hour will be live again September 10th to 14th. And the post pandemic brought huge change. Uh, we'll be talking about disruptions, uh, but most important, we're going, to, we are going to introduce Rehumanization, a very important topic that it will also introduce um, the mega trend of the upcoming season. And we are going to discuss with our um, incredible specialists today uh, the importance of this uh, disruptional and historical change in society and, of course, therefore, in the jewelry industry. So let me start immediately with introducing uh, Gaetano Cavalieri, which is the president of SIBJO. Um, today we'll be um, asking Mr. Cavalieri uh, all the changes and whatever is happening at SIBJO and also uh, what's happening in the, in the jewelry uh, scenario. Uh, from specialists and, and, and the sector perspective. Uh, also, we'll be uh, speaking with uh, Executive Director of the Responsible Jewelry uh, Council, Iris Van Becken. Uh, we'll have the pleasure of uh, discussing uh, the way forward, the future, the, the vision forward of responsible practices sustainable practices for the jewelry industry. The Responsible Jewelry Council is working very strongly together with Sibjo in association with Piera di Vicenza um, in an international perspective to su supporting the industry. Uh, last but not least, a very important, uh, um, the, the, the online Instagram star, Caterina Perez. She's a friend, she's an exciting, uh, vibrant individual, a great entrepreneur. Um, and we'll be asking Caterina uh, the disruption about, you know, how the bricks and mortar are transferring uh, online. She recently started a course and that she's very proud of, very fond of. She's passionate about what she's been doing. She's been promoting the industry on high jewelry. And so we'll be asking Caterina some secrets uh, and about how to uh, connect the bricks and mortar with uh, the online world. So thank you, Caterina, for your time. I know we, we are, you are all very busy, and we thank you for, um, for joining today. So I will be actually presenting now, I'm going to go very quickly on presenting uh, uh, an extract, an overview of the trend book. Um, this year, uh, we have decided to make it a digital version. So the trend book will be launched officially in September. Um, and the launch of the trend book will be on a Saturday, um, actually September 11th. At the Vicenza show will be also streaming online and you can pre-order your copy in the next month or so so you can go online at Transvision and get your early bird uh, special. So let me start with, um, you know, very b quick today. Let's go with, uh, um, you know, the overview on pre-season. So rehumanization, the whole thing of rehumanization, reuse and repurposing, we're going to see how, you know, um, the pandemic has, has accelerated change. Change was about to happen. I mean, from digitization to uh, slow design, sustainability practices, um, uh, everything has been happening. Um, consumer awareness, consumer conscious, um, but also smart working and everything is really a change of social behavior was about to happen. The pandemic accelerated change. And so during this, um, this basically uh, upcoming season, we are going to really see how the change has, effect has already affected and will be affecting the marketplace, 
product direction, silhouette, consumer lifestyle, and so on. So, uh, of course, you know, we have been already seeing a radical optimism. Uh, do uh, you know the post pandemic is bringing um, some economic uh, uh, blitz? Uh, at the same time, um, you know, consumers are seeking a, a kind of seeking for a new balance, but also uh, all these online communication is bringing the urge for what is name, what we are calling the human touch. A human touch and it's been happening in technology. Uh, as you know, everything can be recorded, everything is video, but the live event online, they are the one that get the most boost, the most attention, being there in that moment, uh, and the emotion of being there, it really creates the buzz. Um, but also the human touch on, on products. Craftsmanship mixed with technology, it is a must have. It's not longer about standardization, but more and more into handmade and bespoke, possibly, or limited edition. Um, the cultural shifting, I will be skipping down on the bottom line where social, intellectual, utility, um, all these elements, how important are. So by the year of rehumanization, we are really saying how the world is becoming more human, is appreciating uh, value, which are from personal value, moving to a professional perspective, and technology enabling in a way to link society, to link culture, to link geography in a different level. So looking at what we are, transition demographic map, we are seeing from gen alpha down to silent gen or teenagers, and we are seeing the spectrum and the cluster of uh, demographic, but also psychographic. Being millennial in terms of quantitative data, uh, the bigger spender because of the, of course, demographic uh, 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 quantitative data, but also we see how Gen X and Gen Z are very strong in the spending powers in general, in consumption, and especially in the jewelry industry. Very interesting to say that uh, companies are also starting to target Gen Alpha through their parents. So the consumer being the parent, but the user being the Gen Alpha, we've been seeing interesting phenomenon online where there are, um, um, Gen Alpha is being targeted on Instagram, for instance, um, you know, targeting their parents and, it, and it's interesting to uh, um, explore how communication is being done. Not necessarily only in terms of product, like I meant, uh, I said about communication. We'll be talking about communication later with uh, Katerina. I think she has many things to say about this, but I'd like to immediately go to the next slide where um, a strong vision jewelry forecasting from like over a decade as an independent observatory of Sierra di Vicenza we are trying to bring a methodology to the jewelry industry, which is now becoming uh, a way of life. We are viewing the market and actually society as you would do an ad online. Uh, we go by metrics and the really identifying consumers in terms of lifestyle, belief, opinion, attitude, interest, ideals, value, mindset, activities, and sentiment. Based on the metrics and based on the consumer sentiment, um, we are able to basically understand and follow the mega and macro, macro, but also micro trends of the market. Let's go immediately to the next slide and really see what do we mean by um, uh, mega trends and, and micro trends. When we talk about mega trends, we talk about 10 years plus trends. So it talks about futuristic scenario. When we talk about macro trends, we talk about from two to five years. And, 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 and when we talk about micro trends, it's pretty much related to a sector. Now, mega and macro trends are trends that they are multi-sector meaning from automotive 
to luxury, to food, et cetera, et cetera. When we get into the, the hour sector, and so the jewelry sector, um, a jewel, a shape, a silhouette, a color is a micro trend. Non necessarily is here to stay for such a long time. So this is very important to understand the scheme and the scenario of the phenomenon. So we'll give you an example. When we get to mega, mega to mega trend, so you see here from right, to actually from left to right, an example is sustainability. It is not a coincidence that today we have, um, you know, our important guests such as Iris Van Decken and Mr. Gaetano Cavalieri looking at sustainability as the way forward, not only for the jewelry sector, but for the world, for our, uh, for, for, for really what the world is about and for the, uh, for achieving the sustainable goals of the United Nations by 2030. Um, macro trends being circularity and glossy relation during the next few seasons will be introducing to the industry, to our sector, the concept of circular design, circular and modular design. Circular and modular design it is something that we'll be discussing for, further in the next uh, season. Uh, and it's something that comes in a way we we'll get many inspiration from the past. Planned obsolescence really started in the mid or late 90s. And it's something that we'll be discussing for designers and Trend Vision will work very closely with designers and SME about circular design. But also I believe the large corporation will have to be more aware of circular design and therefore as enabler for circular economy. And then we go into micro trends. Uh, which are includes, as you can see here on the bottom right, we have all the le legenda that includes biomaterials, thrifting, addictive, addictive manufacturing, organic material, handcrafted. And these, those are like how phenomenon really develop and unveil in time. So this is something that I felt was very important to show you and the approach that Transvision always try to apply in foresight, design thinking, and of course, in forecasting. Um, the macro theme for the upcoming season, rest to reverse, euphoria, glow, uh, flow, and new smart. Today, we are not going to go deep into jewelry, uh, I would say, trends. Today is an introduction to the upcoming season. Um, the, trend, uh, the, the, the book is out, actually, actually the digital version of, trend, of the trend book is out in September, but we'll be unveiling uh, pics of the book in the next uh, couple of months. So, as you can see, we are basically connecting, I'm sorry, connecting, um, you know, macro trends and mega trends to what is a consumer. Um, the consumer, of course, um, also accelerated by the pandemic, um, is, is getting more and more into nature, but not necessarily nature uh, in a literal way, but in something in restoring our soul, our, in really hybridizing our life between personal and work and nature and wellness and well-being really being, um, you know, it, it, the way forward. Hyper comfort, bio wilderness, multifunction, a sensorial travel, rest to core. Now, those are all, like we, met, we said, mega trends. Now we are getting into what is this consumer? The, the sensorial is definitely, it is, a, uh, it is like a more a grown up consumer. We are talking about <clears throat> millennial and as well uh, Gen X, <clears throat> sorry. Not really uh, a Gen Alpha. The second macro trend being euphoria. Definitely, the, this is something that is coming due to the pandemic, due to the fact that there is a need and desire for escapism, uh, but also in a way maximalism. Uh, this is a, 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 a communication from Gucci. As you can see, hyper-sensual. 
uh, celebration, celebrating being human, a mix of also uh, the communication is really showing this mix of escapism to real shapes, a mix, a combination of high craftsmanship or high jewels, like uh, Katerina likes uh, to talk about, but also technology and futuristic vision. The deep seeker is the euphoria consumer. Uh, it is someone that is fascinated by and plays with uh, technology um, and, and, and really are explorer and creative people. They are intense of experience from the end to the end and emotional and, and, and really explore all the emotional spectrum. Uh, they are deep seekers and, and they are, and, and, it, they, they tend to be extreme. So extreme sports, remote, uh, hyper experiential travel. Um, I would say that the, the deep seeker is, is definitely someone closer to the millennial, but also I would say mainly Gen Z. The slow flow is pretty much connected to uh, quality and, 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 and low design, meaning going back to quality rather than disposable consumption um, that includes in jewelry we are not going to be focusing uh, today just on jewelry air on jewelry but planned obsolence also include the jewelry during the last decade so excellent craftsmanship um, it will be more and more under the microscope here so the slow flow it will be uh, focusing on these Low centric, which is extremely aware, uh, but let's not forget that these consumers altogether they are not less or more aware of sustainability, uh, but they are all the common denominator is all being extremely conscious and aware. Last but not least, is what we have named No Smart, definitely this technology driven. It is metaverse, it is cobotism, it is about NFT economy, generative design. It's definitely the innovators, which not necessarily include only Gen Z, but I would say that the demographic is really what um, demographic meets psychographic. So when we talk about gender fluid nowadays, we also include age fluid. There is no longer a categorization only of age, but because the psychographic is pretty borderless. So when we talk about the concept of geoconsumer or ethnographic, we also like to um, kind of associate uh, macro themes uh, with um, um, geographic location. If you can see, actually, the, the, the Far East is more orangey and yellow. Uh, versus the, the the western side of the world is a little bit more blue and 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 green. Now that doesn't mean that these macro phenomena, media trend, they are not going to blend in hybridate. But I'm just saying we are just saying that at this present time, um, we we would say that Asia is more into the blue centric um, than versus the deep seekers. Uh, this is due to the economy, uh, climate, environmental changes, political environment, and so on. So one of the things that um, the pandemic have, has, has made very clear to everybody, even though it was already clear uh, for experts and economists and scientists, is the interconnectivity, the, uh, the interconnection of phenomenon. Everything is interconnected, unfortunately and fortunately, from a virus to the economy uh, to climate change. So everybody is impacted somehow from the opposite side of the world. So something that might be happening in China now, it will be coming to this part of the world and vice versa. So what we have to do as, as specialists is to monitor the changes and really make sure that we are ready at the right time. The macro direction for the upcoming phase are connection, biophilia, nostalgia, dreamscapes, low powers, and, and, and we'll be actually uh, developing and, and have these themes ready for you. And of course, utopia, 
um, utopia being one of the most interesting because it's pretty much being in the concept of activism and artivism uh, that includes uh, uh, what's happening with sustainability, climate change, and Greta Thunberg, and what happened, you know, in the last year and a half. Uh, some jewelry highlights, uh, futuristic phenomena, we've been seeing that um, shapes will be repurposed and, and innovation in the way we wear things. So whatever was um, done, now it's been reviewed, reinvented, repurposed, also in unexpected way. Um, so um, shapes can come from uh, ethnic, let's say, inspiration, but also classic, but they've been completely repurposed and re, uh, uh, let's say, um, reused in different way. Nature is continuing, but, you know, to do it, this, of course, we consider a micro trend. There's nothing new here. This is not a forecast, but it's just a confirmation of the nature, what is interesting, what's happening, and what will be stronger. Of course, it's going to be technology. Uh, titanium is being used largely in the last uh, um, you know, few years, but now we, we are seeing the, uh, 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 the use of alternative material, including metal, in the, in the vision of sustainability. That does not, of course, exclude the, con the, the idea that, you know, of course, precious metal are still and will be there. Uh, but there is a lot to discuss about the use of uh, uh, rare um, uh, material and, and, and also we'll be talking also in the next uh, uh, several seasons, uh, natural versus lab grown, um, which I think is under the, and also me, I'm sure that Mr. Cavalieri will have, uh, uh, you know, opinions about it. Uh, I'm going to go very quick here because I think this is the, um, I think the least interesting part. I think the most interesting part it is now to speak with our guests. The tram book is out soon, so order your copy. And now I'm very happy and pleased uh, to start the conversation with Mr. Gaetano Cavalieri, director of SIBJO. Uh, please, uh, Mr. Cavalieri, uh, we would like very much your perspective on what's happening. Thank you very much, Paola, and thank you all these esteemed uh, uh, panelists that you have been able to work together today. Uh, I have to say that uh, your presentation uh, is very impressive, uh, even though you did very fast, but you touch a number of elements such as uh, new technology and innovation, such as uh, uh, different generation, such as uh, circular economy, sustainability, uh, humanization, uh, diversity, human rights, and corporate social eco-friendly uh, 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 responsibility which is something that goes over and beyond what originally was the CSR. But let me elaborate a little bit. And I start from the pandemic, uh, which still is going on. Please do not forget. So uh, even though uh, uh, there are areas in the world, including Italy, where we can uh, uh, avoid to wear the mask, even though I recommend to do that, but this is my personal thinking, because we have responsibility. And I'm saying that because our responsibility is towards ourselves, but mainly is towards the others. And what this kind of responsibility is to do with jewelry and with trend vision? Uh, number one, Responsibility is something that brings us to what are the most important elements today and for the future about the sustainable development goals. In other words, the 2030 United Nations Agenda, where I have the pleasure to sit in the Economic and Social Council uh, of the United Nations and uh, 
uh, uh, with uh, uh, the responsible jury council, we work very closely together on uh, uh, reaching uh, and contributing to those principles. And both of us are member of the Global Compact. So we follow the Global Compact principles as well, the OECD rules and responsible mining, human rights, and so on. But the pandemic has changed the world and changed the way of thinking and changed the way of approaching. And I'm not referring specifically to what has been booming, and I'm sure it will going on in this way. Uh, and I think that uh, we have uh, 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 also this uh, 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 wonderful lady that is today with us, uh, uh, and um, she Caterina. Will, Caterina. Well, each one of you are wonderful ladies. You know, I am the only man, but uh, I was referring to Caterina. You, you are a minority, as I said, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Cavalieri. It's the opposite. Usually women are a minority at this time you are, but we are happy to have you. We are inclusive. <laughs> uh, in, terms, in terms of arithmetic, you are right. <laughs> but I don't want to go into this issue. The issue today is... We are also qualitative, remember. We, are, we feel we are, we are not only quantitative, but also qualitative data. You know, that I, <laughs> you, know that I, you know that I'm very selective and I go for quality only in every single... Uh, absolutely, absolutely. But saying that, uh, let me express the fact that uh, we have seen, all of us, that during the pandemic, in the list of priorities, Certainly, jury was not on top of the list. No. But on the list was firstly health, was firstly responsibility, was firstly uh, humanization in terms of humanitarian behavior, in terms of helping each other, in terms of supporting each other, in terms of pharmaceutical, in terms of li pharmaceutical licenses all around the world, in terms of innovation and new technology, even in connecting the people as we are doing now, in terms of creativity, but very generalized, but this general creativity has also brought, at least to my attention, and I hope also to your attention, the fact that many young generations, especially new designer, and I'm related to uh, the, the trend vision that Paola has so eloquently expressed previously, uh, uh, that uh, they are uh, offering the products of the use of the brain. Uh, you know, the use of the brain apparently is something that we consider uh, that is done automatically. But I believe, and I'm talking to you by experience, uh, uh, being uh, myself a father and a grandfather, that the use of the brain is essential. And the more we use the brain, the more our creativity and our performances are much better. Now, why I'm saying that? Because the jewelry industry, to me, uh, is one of the most exciting industry in the world. Why? Because it's <clears throat> the history and arts, because he's referring to uh, uh, design, because he is referring to uh, uh, sustainability, he is referring today more than ever to what is our responsibility in terms of socio-economic event in several parts of the world, because we have to consider those who are less fortunate than us uh, uh, that uh, we have to have the responsibility once more and again 
to be uh, uh, in terms of humani humanization to help these people to grow and to offer the same possibility and the same tools that we all use. In other words, everybody is free to uh, uh, upgrade themselves and everybody is free to do what they want because we live <clears throat> in a free world, lucky us. And uh, uh, due to the fact that we all are free to do whatever we think is appropriate, uh, 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 due also to our education and to our uh, background, I believe that uh, today we have a great opportunity that we never had in the past. Yes. Because the business, as I said, has changed. And, yeah. uh, and uh, Paola has brought uh, uh, not only to our attention, but has brought heavily all the changes that are uh, uh, going to be in the future based on the acceleration of what has happened in the last one and a half year. Yeah. Now, what's happened in the last one and a half year, maybe not even <clears throat> years may happen. But this has been, you know, like you go on the plane, but you go to a very fast plane, uh, and you go instead of, uh, you know, Mac uh, 087, you go to Mac 2, 3, 4, or 10. And it's so fast that uh, uh, at once you are from one place to another, and in the meantime, you don't realize where you are, but you realize afterwards. So you have to adapt ourselves. So our capacity to adapt yeah. ourselves to the new generation, to the new diversities, yeah. to the new human rights, to the new circular economy, yeah. to new sustainability, to the new innovation technology. Yeah and all these kind of elements yes. uh, uh, is essential, is important. And I believe that each one of us has to contribute as much as we can. I stop here. Thank you, Gaetano. We definitely, we are, we have faith, we have, we are experiencing an historical quantum leap. And now I'd like to, to really pass it to uh, Iris. I know she has some slides to uh, to share, and then we go to Caterina, uh, you know, bringing some uh, online excitement as well. So uh, please, Iris, Iris, forgive me, Iris. Um, please, uh, we are looking forward to see uh, what Responsible Jewelry Council trends uh, we'd like you to share it with us. Thank you. Well, very, first of all, thank you, Paola, for inviting the RGC at the table. And lovely to meet you, Katarina. But also, I'm really delighted to be here with Gaetano, uh, president of SIPCHO, because we go a long way. And, you know, we've been working very closely together. And also, as part of this presentation, I'd be happy to tell you a bit more about uh, our plans in that area. But my first message to everyone uh, that's joining, and thank you for that, is the time is now, uh, and this is the decade of action. Um, Gitano was referring to it in, in his uh, introductory comments. Um, for the first time in history in 2015, you know, 193 countries agreed on a sustainability agenda, uh, an agenda with 17 goals to leave no one behind, um, and it requires collective action from governments, from civil society, from businesses, from all industries, and of course the jewelry industry, because we are an industry of emotions, uh, and trust is, you know, is is uh, is uh, essential there. So just allow me, just very quickly, to touch upon who we are and what the Responsible Jury Council is, and setting the scene, what we see, and then touch also upon some of the trends we see in the area of sustainability. And for those of you that do not know the Responsible Jury Council, we were founded in, in 2005. And interestingly enough, you know, this was over 16 years ago, and we had founding uh, members like uh, Tiffany, Cartier, the Beers Group, Sipcho, Signet, etc. And it was really pioneer thinking when an industry came together to say, well, we need to set a standard for the jewelry industry from mining to retail. We need to see that we have a solution for companies when they want to integrate sustainability at the heart of their business strategy. 
And Paola, look at this, you know, we are now 16 years later, we developed a code of practices, we, the code evolved because of regulatory pressure of stakeholder engagement. You know, in 2019, we were very proud to really launch the code of practices 2019, aligned with the UN guiding principles on business and human rights, aligned with the OECD due diligence. And what are the next steps? And you see it, uh, uh, the 2030 agenda, we're working closely on how we can show as an industry the positive impact we have in the countries where we do business. And then it's really about what you were talking about, about the humanization, but also about how does our product touch lives of people and how can we show that we are doing good. Today, we have 1,450 members uh, in 71 countries and 60% are small enterprises. And just to give you know, a quick snapshot, here you see the 17 uh, sustainable development goals connected to the code of practices. And what does that mean? Actually, a company will become member of the RJC. They will go through their own risk assessment, and then they will look at what kind of management practices that they have established in the areas of legal compliance, decent labor, health and safety, uh, uh, human rights, etc. And why is it so important, this code? Because it gives a very holistic, strong standard. And that's what you need in organization. You can't be picking to say, well, I'm going to do a little bit of philanthropy, but at the same time, I'm not going to do my human rights due diligence. I'm not going to do, uh, I'm not going to pay uh, my wages correctly. So it's super important to have this strong management system. And this, we believe as RJC that the moment is now and also with us, because I think the good news is what we see as a trend is that responsibility is here to stay and it's only going to accelerate. And interestingly enough, in 2021, it was the first time that the World Economic Forum in Davos was purely virtual. And the whole discussion was about this great reset and about the element of trust. How do you build trust? And if you put that trust to our industry, when you walk into a store and you buy something for your loved one or for yourself, you're really putting trust into that company. So when we asked about, you know, what does it mean to be a responsible brand? We see that before the COVID, there was already a big focus on authenticity, on trust, but that now after COVID, purpose matters even more. And I'm not going to go into all of the details because this presentation can be shared, but look at some of the elements that come out here. We talked about it, strong leadership values, fair treatment of people, uh, human rights due diligence, a, a diversity and inclusion, um, climate. So all these topics are topics that the consumer deeply cares about. And we know that millennials and Gen Z are looking for companies to show. So let me just then try to, in, in three, four minutes, uh, briefly go over what do we see as trends? Well, first of all, valuing employee well-being. And that seems very logic. But what we saw due to COVID, and I'm just referring to the McKinsey report, is about creating a safe working space and where there's also the psychological safety. So we know that, the well, that mental health will become a priority for everyone. And the World Health Organization estimates that untreated depression and anxiety alone can lead to approximately $1 trillion in global productivity losses each year. So imagine what that means for organizations. The second one is making deep changes in supply chains. Gitano was referring to it. At the heart of what we do are people and human rights is the foundation. So we as an industry have such a big responsibility to really cascade best practices across the value chain. And it's something we can't do alone. We need from mining to manufacturing to retail. So that interconnected chain can really build that trust. Third, embracing the circular economy. Um, I think that we saw already some beautiful examples in design. We also see a trend, you know, definitely in recycled gold and silver. And we see definitely in design that designers are becoming much more creative in using different materials and looking from the start when they, when they have their creative idea to look at the full circular model. Sustainable consumption and behavior change. We see that the consumer cares. All the reports go into the same direction. Uh, consumers are becoming activists. They want to know and you need to show. 
and mostly they're interested how your product has touched the lives of people positively. What we see on climate action, I think no one is, will be surprised there, that companies are expected to have a plan on climate action, that uh, consumers expect to know, you know how they will contribute um, to the commitments. And, uh, and also there, for example, with the RJC, we're working a lot on education and training. The next one, putting equality at the core of business, we see that diversity and inclusion is, of course, a very, very um, sensitive topic. And we also know that it takes a lot of efforts, you know, from the top down, bottom up, to really integrate that culture. And in that sense, you know, we're very proud that we have started since December um, a campaign. It's called Generation Equality Campaign in collaboration with SIPJO, where we have organized several roundtables in India, in Africa, in America, in Europe to understand better the issues on the ground. And we will be uh, publishing a report uh, within the next uh, couple of weeks. And the follow up of that is that we're going to really drive education on that topic because we want companies small and large to have the tools to really to be able to integrate the topic of equality into their operations. And then, of course, everyone has talked about the SDGs. You know, we could have a separate whole podcast on the SDGs or a webinar because the SDGs is, again, it's the common agenda of the world. And I think there are the biggest opportunities because every organization, small or large, can really contribute to these goals. To some goals, they can look at what's most material and then report on progress. And that brings me to the final trend is normalized ESG reporting. So looking at environment, social and governance frameworks. And sometimes when companies come to me, they say reporting errors, it seems to be so scary. And there I say, we need to really understand reporting as understanding data and information that makes business sense. <clears throat> and where you can show what you're doing well on your labor practices, on your climate, on your product development, moving beyond compliance. And in that context, we're working very closely with what we what uh, with the SDG task force. It's a task force that we have launched that is co-chaired by Richemont and the De Beers Group, where we have developed metrics based on international best practices reporting guidelines, and where we really want to help companies understand what does reporting mean, how can you show progress, and step by step move. And I think it's not uh, unimportant to also tell you uh, that um, also the regulation. Uh, for example, what's coming with the European Commission is also going in that direction. So we as an industry also need to be ready. I'm very conscious of time. I just wanted to give that uh, as, a, as a quick snapshot, uh, but of course, always happy to take the conversation offline and, and or kindly send me questions uh, to the responsible jury council. Thank you, Iris. This is a, only the beginning of the journey that we have started together with, uh, uh, of course, the RJC and CIDRO with designers and SME. I think that whatever you've been doing with the sector and the industry is incredible. But now it's time to embrace the younger designers, the, best, the small companies, because not all, the, some of the, most of them are struggling to survive. And they have to understand how to translate the SDGs and everything else into their businesses and really um, making, being able to me measure this application eventually grow. Uh, but this is a wonderful journey. Now, I'd like very much to have Caterina, which Caterina Perez, she's um, I think she's really representing something interesting. I mean, besides the fact that, you know, I know her personally and she is interesting from an entrepreneurial perspective um, because she has started completely online, you know, unlike um, other people, like including myself, and she's really bridging the trade with final consumer. I think this is very interesting. I think that she has the voice of the people and, and she has a sense, so I, I, and I think this is something that is also interesting to, um, you know, communicate uh, um, sustainability and whatever we've been doing at the trade level to people. Now, Katerina, please take the floor 
and let us <laughs> what's going what's going on on Instagram and what's happening with 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 the with the world of hot jewelry and so on. In reality, social media, Instagram, Facebook, and so on, they're a reflection of what's going on in the world and a necessity nowadays. I think all of us realized during the pandemic how game-changing online can be. And I think from uh, since this uh, a year and a half, uh, in the future, life won't be uh, separate from online. I think it will be an essential part of every business. But of course, like for me and for everybody, it was a big um, question mark how is this pandemic going to affect consumer behavior? Uh, what's going to happen? Are people going to shop for jewelry? Are they going to start shopping online? Because of course, when it comes to high value uh, goods, uh, you want to touch, you want to try on jewelry, you want to understand what you're spending money on, you want to have that element of a human relationship of socializing with that salesperson or a designer. So of course, there is a number of things which uh, came prominent during the pandemic. One of them is that this year and a half was really survival of the strongest. Uh, it reflected on us as business people, how well can we adapt to new environment? How can we reinvent ourselves? Are we innovative enough to stay afloat, uh, to survive in this, uh, well, in this pandemic and generally in business? Uh, can we develop further? And uh, of course, um, sadly, for some businesses prove that maybe they're not uh, really adaptive, they're more conservative, they're not ready to embrace the change and to act fast. Uh, this is another thing that pandemic dictated fast moving. Uh, for me, it was, the, uh, I came up with the course, which was a big uh, a game changer just for my business too, which I really enjoyed. For others, it's maybe taking the business more online. Um, what it also proved is that um, relationship of human beings is super, super important. So if your business, if a jewelry business was built on more uh, quick sale, uh, it's... Um, you know, the, the collections which are uh, more general rather than very curated and very unique. Um, those kind of businesses, I believe, suffered quite a lot uh, because they were up against a lot of competition. Uh, so what I mean by human relationship, of course, for a person who buys expensive jewelry, high jewelry, what I tend to feature on my platforms, the element of communicating with the designer or with the salesperson is super important. And this remained during the pandemic. So the brands who were very adaptive to the change, uh, I say they suddenly turned into jewelry bloggers too. So they started uh, posting more on their social media. They started understanding how do we film our jewelry? How do we present it to a client who is no longer there? I had quite a number of brands who came to me asking Katerina, like, show us how to do this. Uh, and those who actually tried their best, who uh, started using online as a media to showcase their jewelry, but also to connect with new people, they did really well. Uh, also, of course, um, Instagram and social media in January, this is the platform where you face a lot and a lot of competition. So what's emerged as well is the power of personal branding and the power of branding generally so that you how can you stay in people's minds how can you uh, attract someone enough so that when they think of buying jewelry they'll come to you and not anyone else uh, and what i mean by personal branding if we uh, go to instagram in my case i love instagram i use it every day i do research on instagram the designers who actually had instagram pages with their personal presence who talk to their audience who connect with their audience who didn't merely treat their Instagram as a as a showcase but also as a, um, a platform to showcase their values to showcase their expertise they really had great results and they sold uh, you know expensive jewelry during pandemic as well let's not forget the travel was one of the bigger competitors for jewelry and with travel taking out uh, people who had money to buy expensive jewelry the money was still there of course a lot of people suffered but those who could afford uh, you know, big diamonds, they could afford it during pandemic too. <clears throat> so that's what happened. Jewelers with a personal presence, with good connection with the audience, they did really well. Um, so Caterina, uh, if we had to connect, um, you know, uh, let's say uh, conscious consumer uh, to sustainability, uh, collectors, I mean, people that they are collecting whole jewel uh, or jewelry, they are people that they are more conscious, they're usually sophisticated, they are cultural. Mm -hmm. So what's happening in that scenario? How are the online communities are responding to them? 
Well, first of all, there is more communication about what sustainability is, because when we started talking about it, it's a beautiful word, but no one really could understand what it's about. And now I can yeah. see more and more communication online, offline. There is more and more designers who really make it, they, they communicate to their audience about it. And they explain also, they educate their followers, their clients about what it is, how important it is. I think the whole world is aware now that we need to rethink our way of, uh, of, of working of uh, uh, treating jewelry as well because also it's Mother Earth and uh, the resources are not uh, there forever. So um, it's down to each of us, uh, not just the responsible jewelry council, but yeah. also each of us. And hence, we're talking about it. So the more yeah. we make everyone aware, the better result there will be. Yes. Can I please have the entire screen gallery view? Do you mind at the, at the main office? Thank you. So I'd like to have all the speakers together. And I'd like to really have some kind of a, I think this is an interesting time because like Katerina was saying, there is a lot that has, it was, it's been done by Tidjo, by the responsible jury council, uh, but it's much more that's to be done because at consumer level and also, at, I would say once again, designer and SME, the company that they really, they really have to survive, which is the majority mm -hmm. because it's not not many but not everybody is Tiffany Bulgari and 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 Richmond group so it's like what does it mean sustainability how can I really implement these practices on an area what is circular design how can consumer um you know why a consumer should buy a product versus another one um uh, and how manufacturers can upcycle and recycle products not just by reusing gold and dismounting uh, diamonds, but maybe by reusing components, um, uh, remounting or, or rethinking their stocks. There are billions of dollars in India, in Italy, and elsewhere stock in goods that are not sold. Uh, so there is so much to do. And I think that Katerina said something very interesting, that is our responsibility as specialists, as key opinion leaders, we have to educate. And I think that until now, uh, you know, the industry in general kept, um, the, let's say, certain topic within the power and the high level, uh, you know, management. But the truth of the matter is consumers are those who buy jewelry and they are all they are creating waste that includes also jewelry um so we have to educate our consumer on how to use jewelry how to purchase jewelry and our manufacturers how to rethink uh product and therefore understanding the the, the importance of circular economy to achieve the sdgs because otherwise it remains you know among the politicians and the top management but the large majority of people, and now we are becoming all activists, we need to gain these people. We need to get the majority of people and not only the top level, which are educated and knowledgeable about these topics. Uh, I cannot hear you. Uh, if you would like me uh, to answer, it's up to you. You are that that you are the one. I mean, you guys are yes. But I I saw that Iris was uh, also both of you. I mean, listen, this is this is for you oh. for sure. So uh, Iris, uh, please, the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Gitano. Probably we'll have a united message. I think. I think you're very right. Uh, education is at the heart of understanding what responsibility means. And that means it's at every level. I think the lucky thing is that younger children, my god child of four years old, five years old, knows exactly how to recycle, understands the concept of recycling. Yes. When I was four or five years old, I didn't know this. Huh? So it's becoming the alphabet of the children at universities, academic institutions. I think Itano should, should definitely dive a bit deeper into it. But I think our role as RJC is... We are the leading standards organization and we're here to bring everyone along the journey. Today we have 60% smaller enterprises. All our material is free available on our website. Also, we organize often specific webinars on topics, even with smaller groups, non-RJC members, because we also believe we have a critical role in advocacy. 
But I do believe more education is needed to understand all the linkages of sustainability. And I think with that said, I'm going to give the floor to Gitano because, you know, we are working very hard on that. But uh, Gitano. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. First of all, let me express my uh, satisfaction in listening uh, to the three of you uh, has been uh, truly uh, inspirational. Uh, and I have to say what uh, Katerina was describing. In the meantime, I went to check uh, your Instagram and I saw that you have many 10,000 followers. So congratulations. No, no, she has 300 and 300. No, she has a lot, not 10,000. 10,000 was like uh, 20 that. years ago. <laughs> uh, uh, evidently, my English is not so good to let me be understood. I said ah, okay. number of 10,000 followers. Ah, okay. Sorry. 10, a number. So, okay. but, uh, but apart that, uh, I mean, those who want, who are curious, they go to visit, uh, uh, Katerina Instagram page, which, which is, uh, you know, uh, uh, not a page, but is uh, a sort of, uh, encyclopedia, you know, very big, by the way, um, let me let me go back uh, to your consideration. Number one, uh, I personally belong to a family that is in the jewelry business since 1821, so 200 years this year. Apart my other story, Sibjo was born in 1926, so 95 years this year has set up all the technical standard you can check with the blue books from uh, uh, the quality of alloys to diamond to callison to pearls even to the size of the ring so what we have done is uh, practically uh, uh, on the field and on the desk of each jewelers around the world considering that we represent 47 countries in terms of association and commercial members and more than uh, 7 million members through our association. But said that, what we have done, if you go to visit our website, www.sibjo.org, the World Jewelry Confederation, you can see that we have issued along the years so many documents and tools, and uh, and uh, the last one uh, is on responsible mining, is on uh, 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 what to do and what uh, uh, not to do, is uh, made in a very simple way, like a guide. In green, what you do, in red, what is better you don't do. We are going to launch an educational program and uh, in fact, with RJC, Iris, and also other organizations, we are going to set up uh, a specific program for uh, uh, jewelry uh, with all the details in order to uh, give uh, uh, all the tools to the uh, medium uh, and small size enterprises the possibility, as I said previously, to upgrade themselves. Uh, so we have done a lot. Now, I don't want to listen, otherwise we stay two hours, we do not have the time. But for sure, <clears throat> for those that uh, may need, all of us, uh, myself as Sibjo or Iris as RJC or Katerina for uh, uh, their uh, air uh, activity that uh, I, I mean, is commendable and uh, is, uh, is remarkable. And obviously, uh, last but not least, Paola, uh, uh, with the uh, air activity as the futurist, uh, as uh, we know very well, air activity, I think that uh, please contact us, uh, uh, each one of us, uh, collectively or separately, as you wish, and if we, if we can help, we do. As we are doing, for instance, in this moment, helping women yes. in Africa or helping 
uh, 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 artisanal miners uh, to do uh, in a sustainable way their job we are open uh, yes. to all and we are open to everything but overall we are open also to criticism because whatever we all do believe me, could be done better and yes. could be done much more <clears throat> this is what we are going to do Thank you, Gaetano. Uh, I think it was an interesting session. Uh, I think uh, definitely we are active to help and support and to speak to also to those who are distracted, to those who are not necessarily only seeking online, but they want to be told. So we look forward to speak with all of them. We look forward to support uh, mining companies and the miners and women in Africa, but we're also interested in supporting artisans in Italy, artisans in the Middle East, uh, casters in India, and artisans in South America. So we thank you for the, your presence. I look forward to see you all uh, in the trends in September. We'll be um, online in the next several months and weeks between Caterina Perez, uh, led by also Transvision and myself. And thank you, everybody, for your time. Thank you very much. Ciao. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Bye.